Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Jeremy and this is Jeremy's World 10 where we're trying to help you solve the problems you may not have ever even known that you had. Today's problem, we're gonna be talking about giant Class C RVs, but not only giant ones, completely stock ones, and we're gonna be talking about drive shaft vibrations that you may be getting in your Class C, and those are annoying. I'm gonna show you guys how to fix those on this one. It's gonna be really cool, so maybe you've lifted your RV with Weld Tech Designs, and now you're like, hey, what do I do next? I'm gonna teach you, I'm gonna show you, and I got someone also here that's super awesome, super, super awesome, super awesome. Who's this guy? I'm Kaden Johnson. From? Granny Garage. Right there, I got the hat. I'm representing, he's representing. If you want to see more of this kid, head over to Growing Up Garage. Other than that, we're jumping under this RV. All right, so you guys know that I bought a Class C RV. I'm actually getting a vibration out of my drive shaft. And what you're gonna normally notice is from like 62 miles an hour to maybe 67 miles an hour, you get a slight hum. Well, what that hum is caused by is this right here is going to be a carrier bearing and this is not aligned properly. You can see that at this point, it has a sharp angle and goes down to the rear differential. Now on my RV, it's really hard to show you, but I'm gonna show you because you may be having this same issue. Now, when WeldTech Designs puts one of these awesome lift kits on their RVs, um, you have to align these, and I wanna show you how to do it. Maybe you have this problem, but it's an easy fix. It's not even that tough, come on. All right, all right, so step one. I've taken a string line and I've taken two clamps. The first clamp went to the center of the rear portion of your axle in the rear. So I have that on my rear differential. The second side goes all the way up to the center of my U-joint up on my front carrier bearing. Now, depending on the length of your RV, you may only have one carrier bearing and that's okay. You're going to do the same thing. You can run that up to the rear portion of your transmission or just strictly come to the center line on your carrier bearing as well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to remove these bolts and you can see from the factory that they've already put four spacers in there in order to space that down. You can also see that there's a two inch spacer up on the front to space that one down. We're gonna bring this down even farther. We're gonna try a two inch spacer in there and see how that lines up with our string. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a jack stand and I'm gonna put it underneath my drive shaft. I wanna be able to support the drive shaft because I don't want this whole assembly to fall all the way down to the ground. Now what's nice about this is once I get this loosened up, I can actually just slide the drive shaft forward. I can slide the jack forward in order to lower the drive shaft down to fit the desired spacer that I wanna put in there. A lot of times this is the route I'll go, not even using the string line. Let me show you that tip. All right, so now that I have that loosened up, I can actually take this and slide this forward, getting it to where I wanna go. My space is getting a little bit more even here. So now what I can do is I'm gonna grab a tape measure. Well, Caden's gonna grab the tape measure. We can measure the distance between here to give us an idea of the size block we're gonna need. So you can see I have this pretty straight. I'm gonna come and put that up there. That's saying that it's about two and a half inches. I'm gonna to try to bolt up a two inch spacer in there first and see, and then if I need to drop it down, I can use some of these old ones in there to bring it down even farther. You can see that that's a lot straighter now. We've brought that down about an inch and a half. Man, maybe really only an inch because of this amount of spacers there, but that does look pretty good. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the string line off I'm actually gonna just barely pull it forward so I can have the U-joint straight, and that way I can really see the gap from the top to the bottom. Now the next thing I may have to do is take one of these spacers, actually put it in that front one, just to bring that down just a little bit. But first thing, let's move the RV and uh, see if we can get this a little bit straighter. You can see though with the spacer in there, I still have a slightly larger gap on the top than on the bottom. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna take one of the quarter inch spacers, I'm gonna put it in here. Let me show you how to do that without dropping everything down. 
So I loosened up one side. I'm gonna take this bolt completely out, fit the spacer in without dropping everything down. So now we're gonna take one spacer, take the bolt. Put it all back together. Okay, so now look, watch. We're gonna just take it. I'm gonna push it in there and then put line everything back up inside there. You ready? And you can see now we're getting that a lot more even on there. So the next thing we're gonna do is take a look at that front drive shaft carrier bearing, see if we need to lower that down um, just one quarter inch spacer, and that's gonna help this as well a lot. Let's head up to the front. And we're gonna put it in and now. All right, good job. Now let's do the other one. All right, nice. Now you can see right here, we've evened up this gap, maybe even made it slightly smaller, but where that's really gonna help us is when we get back here, evening this out, because what we don't want to happen is it to have too much angle at the back. So right now, this looks really good. The next step is gonna be test driving this on the freeway and seeing if we get a vibration. Let's go for a road trip. All right, so now the fun part, let's go drive it. We're gonna hit the freeway. We wanna make sure that we drive it at least 60 to 70 miles an hour, see if we've gotten rid of all the vibration out of it. All right, so as we were getting on the freeway, we we're wanting to notice, um, is there anything at that 60 to 70 range? And actually right there, ooh, it's, I might have just barely still heard something. We're going to slow down a little bit and try to accelerate, but definitely way better than it was. Yeah, I think that might have just been the transmission because it did not do it again. So we're not getting any drive shaft vibration. Right now we're just a little over 67, coming up on 70 miles an hour. And I mean, of course, this thing is just fun to drive. And that's the other thing, too, is you can see that surprisingly enough even with this lift kit i mean the thing just drives awesome one-handed um, even passing big trucks like we just did you know it's not wanting to blow you all over the road we will head back we'll see if there's any little adjustment we can do i mean it's it's small but hey if we're gonna do it let's do the job right after our first test drive making the changes to our driveline angle i still did get a small vibration at like 63 and 64 miles an hour. I knew that we could get it a little bit better. So what we did is we actually came back and we added a wedge underneath the leaf pack. You can see that this is gonna be thicker on one side and thinner on the other, and it has a slot in there. We were able to slide that into the leaf pack, angling that rear differential down just a little bit more. Now what that also had us do is we had to take two more of these quarter inch shims and put these under that rear carrier bearing. So we ended up putting a two inch shim in there along with three of these. Uh, let's hunt underneath this thing, look at what we did. And uh, this thing drives awesome now. All right, so as you can see right here, when we first started this, this actually had four quarter inch washers. Um, we ended up removing all of those and starting over with just this two inch one. Now in the end, we have three quarter inch ones and one two inch spacer in there giving us a nice straight line as you can see down here our whole drive shaft looks really nice and straight now up on the front one we did add one more quarter inch spacer to the front to bring this down just slightly and as you turn around in the back you'll see where we added the wedge in the rear with the fat part of the wedge facing towards the front of the vehicle another thing that i want to just mention as we're down here and i noticed I would encourage you to get under your motorhome and check because as I come back here, you're gonna see a lot of loose wiring that's just kind of hanging here. This looks like it's going to be for your gray and black water tank. Now, the problem is, is we also have our generator right here and our exhaust for our generator running along here. And you know you're gonna be super frustrated when your tank overflows because the sensor went bad saying, hey, um, your tank is full and you didn't empty it. So I would definitely encourage you get underneath it and check it. I know even when this RV came in, this was also hanging. You can see we threw up a couple zip ties to be able to drive it. I'm gonna grab a couple more and just zip tie this up out of the way. 
uh, you just don't want to have problems and it's better to spend a couple minutes underneath it. So that was informative, at least I hope that you got to see how we align these drive shafts um, or you can align the drive shaft at home in your driveway. Um, and that's definitely going to be something that you're going to need to do if you put a lift kit on it from WeldTech Designs. However, even I noticed on my stock Jayco, it had a drive shaft vibration as well. So really this is for anybody, maybe you don't even know you have a drive shaft vibration until you watch this video and then you're like, oh my God, that's what that annoying noise is. Well, now you know how to fix it. And it's all thanks to Jeremy's World 10. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So make sure you guys smash that subscribe button because I'm going to be throwing down a ton more knowledge, teaching you guys all kinds of cool things about RVs and life. You know, it's my world. This is craziness. So thanks guys for watching this video. If you have any questions though, leave them down below. Let me know. I will be happy to answer them. Um, and maybe you have a special way of aligning your drive shaft. What do I know? Teach me something. That's all I got. This is my world and I'm done hanging out with you guys. See you later.